Now let's talk about the leading inflation number in the country now, uh, surging past 34%. That's food infl inflation. And we've talked a number of times, even this week, about the surging price of commodity in Nigeria. So joining us to discuss that now is African Farm Amogaji. He's the Chief Executive Officer of Farm Credit NG. Good morning, Mr. Amogaji. Been a while. Good Happy morning. New Year. Happy New Year. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see no farmer, no future. I say no farmer, no today, because if you don't eat today, how do you even talk about the future? Well, it's been really difficult when it comes to food items uh, in, in the country. Mm. Uh, even locally produced food items have yeah. become so expensive. Uh, we've seen a lot of efforts from the government. Uh, we've had a lot of cries. We've had protests. We've seen threats from labor unions. But it, it doesn't seem to be getting anywhere. The prices are still going up. A bag of rice now is heading to 90,000 naira, if not more, in some areas. And yet, um, we've had intervention on rice. We've had dry season farming and all of that. Are we missing some things? Yes, we're missing quite a lot. Um, an understanding of how the sector works. You know, there's theory, there's practical. And over the years, uh, maybe in the last two administrations, we've not been able to actually uh, plug it in. And what we really see is we have square pegs and round holes. That's bottom line. And a lot of beautiful ideas that we need to adapt before Im we implement. So, you know, um, it's always that information. You know, in agri in Nigeria, you see government throw money at agriculture instead of investing in information. So that's, is, we don't have the right information and the right information comes from players, not from people who have degrees. And that's where we have a, a lot of challenge. And we focus on the wrong things. Okay, so take for instance now, uh, about eight months ago, the administration uh, did come out with the, uh, um, the food security challenge when they spoke about the state of emergency on food. And in that statement then, they did say that availability was not a challenge, it was affordability. With that statement then, they focused on affordability, not availability. But we players knew that it was availability because the prices were going high, impute was going high, um, NAVDAQ was clamping on some products we use, so the cost was going high, insurgency and all those things were there. So when they came up with that statement around affordability, not availability, we knew there was going to be crisis. And so the crisis we're facing today, part of it is focusing on affordability and not availability, just for them to understand later that availability was the challenge, not affordability. They could have done a few things about it, but because an understanding of the sector also is what is causing this. And you know, everybody is as focused on the current challenge. May, May, June 2024, there would be a lot of issues that the government may not be able to handle again if they don't take actions. And we reached out to a couple of handlers of Mr. President. So and before President, you go on, yeah. what are some of those issues that we may face May, June, before you now go to how we can avert it? Yes. Um, a basket of tomatoes is likely to hit between 80,000 to 120,000. Why? Because climate change and also cost of production. In the north now, we're having um, reduced food supply. And so that's what um, warranted the, uh, one of the governors to say, we won't take food, you know. So around this time, every year, May, June, there's generally a shortage of tomatoes, fresh corn and coal across the country. The northerners use irrigation and they use government irrigation. They stop the waters around March. Okay, so they don't have enough water and prepare to grow rice because the lands they use is like fish pond. So the waters can flow out and it, it destroys things like vegetables. Now, the Southwest or the South generally have not leveraged the opportunity of the lands they have and some irrigation facilities. So there's always a major shock in May, June. So this year now, when the South is not preparing and the North is facing insecurity and some challenges also, there's gonna be a big of a big challenge and also, 
uh, this factor, many people are not paying attention to it. When we began to um, force merchants to open grains, when we say they were hoarding, they run legitimate businesses, okay? And many of them are indebted to banks. Banks are facilitating those transactions. Now, government, the people in government don't understand that the merchants don't only own the grains, they own the trailers. So when it is time to bring the food in May, June, they may hit back, just like it happened in 2021. So government does not control the logistics. It's those same people that are making losses currently that would want to hike the prices. They control that chain. So understanding information, understanding how the sector works with the right information, right now, we're not getting it right. Is there any way to avert this uh, bad picture? <laughs> There's a way to avert it. And I, like I said earlier, we've reached out. It's just that they're not listening to the who is who in government. What they need to do is to encourage or empower leveraging the river basins across the south. When I say south, 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 south is southwest, but mostly southwest, okay, um, and um, north central, to be able to produce. But there are a lot of technicalities involved in that production. You must be experienced to be able to do that. Uh, but just throwing money at it and say we want to do it will not work. Because culturally, the people, how they respond, when they respond, all these factors are missing, but something can still be done. Before, they could avert it. Now, they can manage it. Mm. Because they can't import tomatoes, even if they want to import from any country. Many of the countries look for tomatoes from Nigeria to take out. And also. now even state governors are trying to protect their own people, yes. uh, as you noted, even though that came kind of controversial, I think the state government was not. So um, who is supposed to handle this at the Ministry of Agriculture, Water Resources? Where do we go from here if so, we wanted to channel this message? It has to be a marriage between the Ministry of Water Resources and the Ministry of Agriculture. Ministry of Agriculture does not have land. They have the parastatals okay, that influence the value chain of agriculture. Ministry of Water Resources, they have the lands and they have the dams and they have the farmers. So it has to be a marriage and that marriage, we're still not seeing it play out because if they have that right information, uh, they ought to have taken that step now. The sweet potatoes that we can use as options for the yams that we did not plan four months ago, is where we are today that yams is expensive. So four months from now or three months from now, the new varieties that we have, many of them can deliver in two and a half months. However, the cost of seed also is extremely expensive. And we don't have corn now. We don't have the seeds available, the quality corn. We don't have rice seeds available. So focusing on let's go and produce is not even the challenge now. How do we get the seed companies to be able to bring in the seeds, and also leverage on the seed companies we have here. We've not supported the seed companies in Nigeria, so we, have, we may have to still bring some in. Verified ones that have been accepted by uh, uh, the parastatals in Nigeria that have been used in the country. We need government and private sector to work together to bring in some um, of this input now. Mm. So, um it sounds like this hope that inflation will begin to taper towards the end of the year to next year, it sounds like it's still far-fetched. It's still far-fetched um, if they don't engage the right practitioners. Okay, right now, um, because you see, things have gotten to a level where we can manage some information again. We must say it as it is. Now, currently, the handlers of agriculture in the country are not experts. And I'm not talking about the minister. The minister is an administrator and a good one at that. But the people working at presidency, check their profiles. They are not agri experts with relevant knowledge. So we would keep going round so and round. what position are you referring to now? You're not talking of the minister. The advisors, the assistants, check their profiles. They don't know the sector. So if they don't know the sector, no matter how Mr. President wants to change things, you know, it can happen. But the good news is that in three months, we can record a dramatic change if they are listening to the right people. 
three months. And you said you've been trying to reach out. I have reached out. I just can't mention to no names. Avail. To no avail. The who is who managing presidency and Mr. President. They're not listening. It's not real to them. This food crisis is not real, but May, June but will be real. Perhaps they are too protected to feel what the people are feeling. They are, they are. I've had one-on-one, -on -one, not phone calls, but they're not, it's not real. And it's unfortunate that it's a big embarrassment to the president who has the opportunity to turn things around very fast. You have the private sector more than willing now, who are more, uh, they're more patriotic Everybody now is thinking about Nigeria, not who is in office, but the government, the people handling the government, they're not paying attention to leveraging that opportunity. Mm, and it does seem like, I mean, the president has a lot as we speak now. He should be in Qatar, <laughs> so he would not be watching this program. So it's supposed to be his advisors, you know, and the directors and all of that who are supposed to pass this message to him. Yes. But most likely, even if it gets to him, if it gets to him, it's going to be diluted. You know, he's not even supposed to... He might to... even have a political tone to it. He's, you see, the beautiful thing that this administration has is the minister, or current minister of agriculture is a seasoned politician. Let's get this wrong. In Nigeria, you need a politician now with a challenge. You need a politician also at the M of Affairs who is good at administration and can work with experts. All these things should not get to the president. It should, the advisors that speak to the president must be people, they call it special advisor. They must have special knowledge. So if you have people who don't have special knowledge, there's no special advice to give. Yeah, well, if they have special knowledge and they're not feeling the pain, <laughs> they don't see it as reality, then <laughs> you might as well not get it. But thank you so much uh, uh, for your time, the Chief Executive Officer of Farm Credit NG. Thank you for having me.